terms of maybe a game that you guys might have dropped in at the start of the season when you went down four in the fourth quarter, um, you know, how do you see you know, how this game ended and how this team is looking now with, with the flow that you guys seem to have? Yeah, you're right. I think um, you know that 13-0 run could have turned into a 17-18. I run, but um, you know, I thought there's just the mistakes that were made recently and the runs that other people have gone on um, through this last little period, um, Perth game. Um, you know, we've just been far more composed and just haven't lost our brains through some of those moments, and then we've just been better process driven. And I know CG and before that timeout, um, the coaches kind of commented to me is like, well, so, you know, CG was great in that timeout and really just led, this is how we're going to come back. And um, so, yeah, when we're all on that kind of page to say, whatever hits we take, we'll, we've got to find a way out of it. And that's kind of, you know, what's happened this year when a um, bunch of things have happened. And, you know, again tonight to say, you know, Barlow took a, a knock and was out for the game. You know, we, David Quera does an ankle. We're, we're down to, you know, one four man and Newley's back playing the four spot again and some different things like that. And so we, we dealt with all those things. And, um, you know, while I'm talking about Mason Peatling, just a, you know, unbelievable game from him. You know, he'd, he's had some a really good, you know, two or three games in a row and um, rewarded with a starting spot tonight. And, um, you know, the, the two three balls, but the, you know, I thought the connection with CG and handoffs and rolling to the rim and um, some of the sprints that he had. And, um, you know, we we hope that, you know, he can be a little bit of Shaili at the four spot with just all the effort plays that he can come up with and, and keep being in the, in the right spot. So he was great. Um, you know, CG's job on Harvey tonight and the way he defended that was exceptional. Point to Mason, I think point to Marcus and obviously Shea being back, but you guys have learnt on your defence the past few games and I think over this stretch it's sort of lost because your offence has started to look legitimate now as well. But what is the difference between the start of the season and now from a defensive perspective? Yeah, you know, hold it in a team to 77 and, and keep holding teams under 80, which we've done a little bit lately. And, um, you know, I thought we had a theory tonight that we thought the three wall was so important to them. And, um, you know, we, we ran them off and we've been one of the best teams in the league at running teams off the three-point line. But, you know, that forces some people downhill and, um, you know, how well we can navigate that next part, whether we can force them into mid-range jumpers or their attack at the rim, Can we? how can we wall up and how can we help each other um, as well. So, you know, you still see the result of that and you say that's the area that we've still got to get better at um, in the, their ability to get 33 free throws. And, um, you know, if we fix that part and hold teams under 40% from the field, you know, we're in, we'll be in a good space. Chris, it seems like you're getting different sorts of looks compared to the start of the season as well. Threat like Marcus, um, what do you, what's the difference you're seeing out there as far as the flow of the offense now compared to the start of the season? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you add in uh, a little bit more familiarity in players. Like I've played with Shea for a long time, I've played with Mace for a long time. So there's just certain things that you know you can get or you should be looking for. And the only way that you can build that is games played and time spent. So there's a little bit of familiarity. Um, but you know, the last little bit we've made a real intent to move the ball well hunt good shots um put our feet in the paint if it's there of course take it move it on um you know we want to whip the ball around we want to shoot some good threes and try and make a lot of them um you know our numbers not where we kind of said it may be in regards to the three makes but just the intent to hunt them and get our feet in the paint is opening up some good things i think a big part of that is rage on the efficiency wasn't there tonight but i think the intent was the, the same getting two feet in the paint and mm. pushing it. Um, how much has he opened up your game over the past few games his, uh, through his improvements? Yeah, I, I think like the pace that he can play at, um, you know, he, he has a gravity about him when he gets off and takes off downhill, especially in transition, whereas, whereas where we can try and get a lot of good looks. So he, he takes off and he gets down into the paint and he's always looking. So. Um, that's been really positive from him in the last uh, few games. Um, so when he plays at speed, it creates a lot of opportunities for us. You just spoke about the defense a moment ago, but offensively, I mean, notwithstanding that, that Barlow and Fisher didn't get to play much, but the depth of the talent you guys have offensively now, how do you assess where that's 
that. I mean, a great example is what Rajon did on Thursday versus tonight, more of a playmaker, and it's different guys stepping up in different games. X was really quiet today, and but he's helping other people to, to get going. So how are you seeing where that's at right now in terms of that depth? Yeah, we'd like everybody to get going on the same night, and that's still the, the, the challenge you know, of coaching and just, you know, re really defining X's role and, um, you know, the spark that he can he can really bring us. And, um, you know, we, we, we know what he's capable of doing and, um, you know, just got to make sure that he's, he's somewhere between this playmaker and scorer right now and we've just got to really define it for him. And I'll sit down early in the week and make sure that, you know, there's real clarity about what we want from him as well. Um, yeah, you know, Shea coming in, you know, Tuck having five assists, it's, you know, it's going to be different on different nights, but, um, you know, we, ex we expect CG to try and get, you know, 10 good three-point looks as, as good as we can. And then I think just the confidence that we've given to other people, to, to Mace, to CD Sav, to um, Tuck, for the Newley, for those guys to open shot, go ahead and shoot it, and we'll, we'll, we'll rebound the, the way that we want to rebound. And, um, you know, I don't think we've had a 20 rebound margin on a on a team all year so you know the way that we we crash tonight and, and you know the commitment to it is getting better so um yeah there's good depth there's you know obviously um McQuatch has been a guy with Shea coming back and you know newly playing pretty well that we but he's going to stay ready and we look forward to the opportunities that's going to come for him later in the season as well and early in the game there seemed like a really Yeah, I think with with the you know consistent message from everybody about how moving the basketball and um, you know and that's created advantages off our handoff. We've been better at just getting into our handoff offense and people putting their feet in the paint. And that's it's then that's forcing you know closeouts on the next one. So you know we don't need to stay on the perimeter. We need to create try and create the next advantage and having lob threats and, you know, people have to commit to that. And so, you know, the extra passes are opening up. Chris, what did you say in that timeout that Ben referred to a few minutes ago? I got the feeling in the fourth quarter that you were not going to let this team lose uh, the game today. Um, oh, I don't know exactly, but like there's um, the messages, um, like we, we, we can't get hung up on what's happened and like we can't get hung up on where we are with our record like all we can do is move forward and um you know probably some of the guys hearing that from me is wild because i hang on to things for way too long but you know yeah we gave up two three ten point leads but we were still in the basketball game we're still on our home court and we you know we have the tools to go out and win a basketball game so um letting it go picking our heads back up and, and moving forward uh, was mainly the message of the day No, I think like in the future it'll be cool. Um, we'll look at the photos, look at the videos, whatever it may be. Um, I th my message, you know, all throughout this was what I want is a win, um, and I want Brad and his career to be celebrated. Um, I think that was the main part of this day. Um, you know, that 300 number is not right for him. It's pushing a thousand. You know, we, we were trying to calculate it. Like there's 700 odd plus games of high level basketball in that old body. Um, so I think I really wanted today to be for him and his kids and his family that were here. And Dean, what, what, what can you say about Brad? I mean, you spent that season with him in Sydney as well, and you've been around him a bit, but I mean, he's had a phenomenal career. And as Chris says, a lot of it was overseas. People probably don't appreciate what he did in Europe for so long, um, but you know, a huge milestone nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, I thought we, we celebrated the day right. And, um, you know, we got, have the opportunity in Stacker to come back and, you know, his first coach at Townsville tell some stories about, you know, being a part of his his journey and, um, you know, we had a lot of the owners in the in the room as well and being a part of that moment and, um, you know, Shay Hilly, Shay Hilly presented a hucker to Chris and, and Newley as well, which was, um, you know, 
I got one of those when I left the breakers and it's one of those moments that you'll remember forever and um, you know Shay by himself doing a hucker you know with crazy passion I was so disappointed that the game didn't start straight away because we <laughs> we had to hold on to that kind of energy for another half an hour I thought we would have come out and just exploded the, the way the way that, that that he presented that so as a club I'm really pleased the, the indigenous round you know has been really good fun for us to continue to learn about Steve Parker and the uniform that he put together for our team and the way that the clubs um, embraced it. And, and I think it's just been an amazing initiative um, over the last few years and the growth of it. But Nils is fun, man. Nils is just, you know, when you, I mean, we lost DA and just having that guy around that, that can just pick everybody up and uh, have fun with it. He has his own little moments and, and stuff, but, um, you know, he's been great for CG as well as, as a guy that can just bounce off of things and, and keep it light and fresh. And so, um, you know, he's been playing really good basketball the last few weeks as well and probably not, you know, the perfect game for him today, but, um, you know, we know how invaluable he is and um, what, what a great leader he is. Chris, what are your thoughts on I mean, you get to the arena wanting to tip off at four, but I also like having our games on TV, so I get it. <laughs> Steve, how do you reflect on Chris and his 400th and also the fact that on a day like today, he can still drop 25 points, you know, hassle a really crafty guy like Harvey Nelson on the defensive end and still lead your team at his age and at this many legs. So, <laughs> you know, how happy are you that yeah, it's been so important for me, you know, through this period. He, he kind of looked at me one time, he was like, Coach, you're going to have a heart attack, keep coaching like this. And he stepped up in areas of leadership and, you know, if, if, He's never going to show any quit, and he's going to drive to to have us continue to win games. And you know that's what he's about. David Barlow made a great speech and talked about him tonight, and, and it was just all about you know he just wants to win. You know everything is just about winning for for him right now. If it if we're doing something that doesn't help winning, he's going to hold me accountable. He's going to hold a player accountable to it. So um, you know I love the strength that he's gained over the last couple of years strength conditioning stuff done a great job and you, know, you can just see that and the balance and how he plays defense and um, you know it's really helping him at this stage of his career and you, you say you know there's there's no drop off right now we, we even consider say hey the last two years have probably been his best two defensive years so um, you know I'm not sure if he wants those jobs for 30 minutes every night but um, you know we're more than happy for him to, to go and guard the, the best guy from the perimeter Yeah, you know, we just, we look at the next one, Kansas, you know, we just won some series. Um, we won the Southeast series, we we won the Perth series, we won this Wollongong series, and, you know, now we go into some teams that, you know, we haven't been able to beat yet. So that's the, the next marker for us. Are we are we good enough to improve to beat teams that we haven't beat this year in Cairns and Sydney in our next two games? And both of them um, have held us to you know, pretty mild offensive totals. And um, so, yeah, just to be able to just walk in there and see the growth in our team. And if that growth is good enough to, to beat top two teams in the next round, then, um, you know, we'll, we gain the confidence to say that, yeah, we're absolutely capable. But I think we're at a really good point right now leading into these two games. To, to, let's have a real crack at it. You know, we've got nothing to lose. Um, let's just go out and play free and, and shoot our shots and play the defence, play together, and, um, you know, what will be will be. Yeah, you know, there's once you get over, the, you know, some things, it's just a... Uh, a point to say, you know, let's enjoy our basketball and get back to and play a little freer and, you know, don't get tired about situations when you're always hunted. It's, um, you know, it's it's a, it's about keeping people fresh and, um, you know, making sure their role's perfect and, and, and nothing changes in that one. But, um, you know, it's a, it is a different feeling walking into the gym. You know, it will be these next two games where, um, you know, we're playing a little bit of an underdog role compared to, to where we've been. So, um, 
yeah, look forward to it.